traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Side loves combinations. Never seen it like me, bitch. I'm an alien. Been a donda, ski mask and make you run. Been a donda, like a cop at stadium. See a little blood and go macadamia. Fuck with the boy, that's a huge mistake. Told you I'm not of the human race. Keep pulling that trigger, I'm mutilate. Hands chop with a shooting pain. This venom inside is ready to ride. So think big, are you ready to die? The last time I was ready to ride it. Now I'm fighting the carnage inside. And my demons really stay evil. It's dark in me and it ain't leaving. I try to bury it and stay breathing. And no heart means I ain't beating this nigga. Y'all talk so violent, my sons, y'all so childish Put coins on your eyelids, that means I don't buy it, bitch I'm running on the inside, and the truth is a given to this lie And you need a demon to fight the devil, the one to brock you on this guy And I'm tired of being in disguise, I'll accept the evil won't pick sides Now the jackal's there, but it's me instead, I'ma wear the skin, you know this high, bitch Dark it is all I know, every time I fall I know, yeah. Everything is all my fault, so every time I fall I grow, yeah. Every time I call my home Everyone ignores my phone. Now I don't need your help. I can do it on my own. We a venom. Yeah, this world don't take advantage if you let them. We were just, but now we're handing down the center. Now your fate is in the hands of those you pen We a venom. Yeah, bitch. What the fuck you wanna do? I'm a demon, but no one in front of you. Think you really doing something with a gun or two? You pull the trigger, I'ma let you meet the other dude. I don't think you really wanna come with you. You just wanna flex a little, move the pecs a little. Couldn't read the text. So it's taxi will the cutthroat when they talking at their neck. I kill them. JG went with the check is real. I only give you one option. I get the spill blood. Took the red pill so I know the real yeah. ones. And you ain't got the roster to lift the steel drum. Ramble. Everybody here can get touched. Your life is unrefundable. We know you get flushed. Everybody want it gone, gone. The real thug. The wind blow wrong and the strong and wicked up. Oh, shitty with a chrome. Did he? Oh, with his blood got me so giddy. Got you a swag, make you so drippy. I'm fleeing the scene, but with your kidney. Big pop, he wanna slide them batter up. Got him pancake, but you battered up. Pull them cameras, open apertures. You gon' need it for the medics. So you in the back, boy, that's fabulous Shine a laws, way, but that's blasphemous When them tanks have little them canisters Feel like stallions, boy, we savages Think it's fuck, set, we don't back it up Bullets ain't shit, they don't pass to us Run that whole clip, now your ammo up Run them long legs with tarantulas, bitch Dark it is all I know Every time I fall, I know that Everything is all my fault So every time I fall, I grow back Every time I call my home Everyone ignores my fault, damn Never don't need your help I can do it all my own We a fan of Now this story got taken way out to left field. Though it is no surprise, but let me tell you of the version I heard. This tale carries on from the first rebellion in heaven. The twisted and angry war driven forefathers of the Titans, who were then filling the died in the biblical flood of Noah, were driven into submission by the Titans. Uranus was the last proper leader and king of the Nephilim. The curse that Kronos and Zeus suffered was the command that God had given the fallen angels to hunt down and kill their children. Each generation that bore a child was cursed to kill a child for an angel in any form could not dissipate that commandment of their creator even though it contradicted their nature as angels. Typhon was created by the blood of Uranus and disguised well. When Krenos struck Uranus and chopped off his Jimmy Johnson it fell into the sea. The blood and semen mixed with the sea and out stepped Aphrodite, the heart of Typhon. She predated the Olympians by two generations and none knew the truth of her for all would become mesmerized by her beauty. Once on Mount Olympus she assumed the role of the goddess of love, but truly it was she who birthed the monsters of Greek legend. 
The coup you speak of involving Hera did not involve Apollo or Poseidon but rather ours and Hades as well as the death of Delphi for the visions of the oracle threatened to reveal it for Aide's true nature. Aphrodite had already gotten close to Mars by seducing him but she needed someone with cunning to ensure his downfall. So she invoked the sworn oath Hera had made to the coven she had belonged to before she had married Zeus and held her to her oath in aiding in the plot to overthrow him as well as taking the fall for it if they were discovered, which Hera agreed to. When the plot was discovered and everything fell apart Zeus had sent for a mystical item from a land far away. He sent for the chains of Tiamat and it was the fabled bottomless pit that he hung her over. He banished Hades and Ars from Greece and they traveled north into the lands of Scandinavia. Ars took on the role of Odin and Hades took on the role of Loki. Zeus however and some of the other gods such as Apollo and Hermes among others left Olympus because mankind had experienced too much deception and seen too much war to trust the gods any longer. They assumed roles within the newly forming religion of Catholicism and became the defending archangels of the Catholic faith. They continued to hunt down Aphrodite who had fled Greece into the countryside Britain and Ireland as well as France, driving back the monsters of Tiffin who took on more modern and subtle nightmarish creatures of the night since Apollo slash Raphael drove the minions of the devil away from being able to appear by day and only could come out at night. Until one day Zeus received a message asking for help in Scandinavia. In the end the chains of Tiamat were retrieved and used to bind Hades slash Loki, Jemgen and Fenrir to the boulder of Sisypus and Hera stayed imprisoned blocked by Jemgen's body that was blocking the exit to where she is held and known now by the name of Hell. That the chains remain until her Megadon begins and heaven gathers for the final battle when Michael slash Zeus will retrieve the chains to lay hold that old serpent who was the devil, Vinker and cast her into the lake of fire during the final conflict. However doing this will set loose Loki, German Gun and Fenrir along with Hell, which will kick off Ragnarok, which will cause Heimdall to sound his horn, which to Mankind will sound like the trumpets of God sounding for the rapture and to all cascades from there but that's my tale I'm sure you're not going to ask where I heard that from. Look at the name on my account. Very good research accurate but incomplete. The sorceries goes far back into the past with traces of tales predating Egypt. Yet even in the pantheon of Egyptian gods she can be found as the goddess Hatha, namely her title as the Witch of the West, as well as links to Cthulhu, Karl and an inscription upon a stone found in that predates the flood of Noah 75,000 years ago. The inscription tells of a woman who was possessed by the same dark force that would later become known as the Demiurge. The sages sealed her away in a labyrinth prison and cursed her mortal body to wander inside unable to die but not living either either ordered to trap the dark power by binding him to her. The entrance of this labyrinth is sealed with the fountain at the entrance which sustains her with the waters of eternal youth. Another tale includes her being banished to the far western lands of exile to an island with a single tower upon it. The Tower of the Sea Hag. She lures any adventurer to come and rescue her as a damsel in distress. The hero follows the lore to the island where he finds not a damsel but an ancient old crone who then devours the hero's life force over time like a succubus to sustain herself. She has been known to be fond of possessing young coming of age women who experience a series of identical events. First the young girl will begin having night terrors of an old crone who comes in the night to try and suck the soul from her sleeping body. They usually experience this around the ages of 11 to 13 as old. Cases have stated that the victims begin to soon show signs of physical deterioration much like sleep deprivation, sunken darkened eye sockets, pale complexion, clammy to the touch and overwhelming lethargic feelings. Then once the child experiences a first menstrual cycle their physical symptoms are gone almost the following day. However the child will suffer from what is stated as a severe change in personality to the point where friends and relatives do not recognize them. Personality is also the same with each case as becoming very self-sustaining, prideful, and arrogant. The child will regress in private and become secretly obsessed with witchcraft and the occult law. This progress is to a stage of severe promiscuity by the age of 16 as old where after becoming known as an openly sexually curious woman she will seek to become married as soon as possible which never lasts for more than three months. Within the time her husband, who is usually a man of money and power, dies of the same causes in every case. Food poisoning that died usually consisting of lethal doses of untraceable chemicals that is mixed in with her husband's meals. She will usually seek to inherit through whatever means necessary the husband's wealth and immediately begin searching for another husband. Example of cases of the White Witch of Rose Hall along with many others in the Caribbean during the 15th and 16th century. 
Another well-known legend linked to this sorceress is the Bell Witch during the early 1800s. This link is the best case in which it details accounts of not a duality of two witches as usual, but more of the spectre of the old woman directly that has possessed many women throughout history. I theorize that this version of her came to the Americas before the colonists after her time as the Morrigan. It is said in legend that she had fallen in love with a Viking warrior king but hid her true nature through illusion. After foreseeing a vision of his death she attempted to alter his death and failed. She revealed her true form to him after thinking she had stopped the vision from coming true. Her old chrome form shocked him as he stumbled over the cliffside to his death just as her vision had foretold. Grief struck and she vanished in a flurry of crowd never to be seen again. It is also rumored that her Viking love was none other than Odin himself. Tales also coincide with this tale that state that the chrome part of the Morrigan's duality separated from the woman it was inhabiting and left the Irish Isles leaving the unfreed spirit of the Morrigan who afterward became one of the three spiritual guardians of the Celtic legend of the elemental incarnations the earth spirit Gaia. As representing the sisterhood that encompasses the witch's belief in the power of three. That being the High Witch of the White Oak Magic, the Hit Witch of the Candle of the Black Flame and the High Witch the Grey Sage of Balance. These three witches were, by Celtic law, the incarnations of the living life force of the earth. In principle they were the equivalent as Jesus was to God within the Trinity or as I am to the entity they refer to as the devil. Living incarnations whose life force or soul was derived from the manifested deities of their respective entitlements. So after separating from this woman the entity of darkness whom of which was originally crafted by the magical power of the Shankar stones. Raphael is one of the most important angels in Judeo-Christian culture. His name means God heals or God's cure. Therefore, he is regarded as the angel who carries God's healing powers. The Archangel Raphael is the addressee of many prayers of those who wanted to be cured from the most different diseases. Among the three main archangels of Catholic tradition, Saint Raphael the Archangel is one with the most subtle presence in the Bible. His main biblical appearance is found in Book of Tobit, part of the Old Testament. In it, the archangel descended to earth in order to follow Tobit during his journey, who was a God-fearing youngster, someone who loved God above all things. The angel assumed the human form and guided Tobit to his destination. In the middle of their journey, when Tobit and Raphael were on the banks of the Tigris, Tobias was attacked by a large fish that attempted to devour him. But Raphael encouraged him to fight the fish and drag it out of the water. Tobit managed to defeat the fish and the Lord's angel asked him to keep the fish's heart and liver as these items would be a healing instrument of the Lord. He would also have to keep the fish's call. The angel guided Tobit to his destination, where the latter was offered Sarah's hand. Although a beautiful young woman, she was possessed by demons. Sarah had already been married seven times, and in all of them, their husbands died before marriage. Tobit feared to be another victim of that curse, but Raphael assured him that God was at his side. The angel instructed him how to proceed in order to protect himself from the demons. In this ritual, under Raphael's guidance, Tobit used the heart and liver of the great fish. With that, the demons were exorcised, and Tobit and Sarah managed to consummate their union. The Lord's angel protected Tobit on his return home, and when he found his father, who was blind, Tobit made use of the fish's call to promote a true fiber miracle, wire signal following terminated. Raphael's guidance. After putting the gall on his father's eyes, his vision was restored. Due to this biblical passage, those who believe in the angelic figures also believe that the presence of the archangel Raphael helps in the healing of physical malaise, akin to the healing process of Tobias' father's blindness while also assisting in the healing of psychic and spiritual illnesses like with Sarah. The angel Raphael is also found in the Islamic culture as Israfil. According to Islamic tradition, this angel carries a trumpet that announces the coming of the Last Judgment. 
Catholics consecrated October the 24th as the Feast of St. Raphael the Archangel, the bearer of the Lord's healing. And on September 29th, ceremonies are held in honor of the three great Archangels, Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael. Three of these twelve stones of immense power were crafted by a noble sage of the ancient world known as Malek, under the instruction of his dark master Golgothus, the Dark One. These stones together gave the holder the power over time and space and could even bend the fabrics of reality to the will of the holder. Dreams could become reality, one could cross the boundaries of dimensions and even control the rotation and elemental forces of nature. Malek used this power to bring forth an army of nightmarish creatures from the astral realm and laid siege to the old world conquering the world in a matter of months. He imprisoned the council of sages in their mortal bodies that were made into dead servants known as the Archons. They were with principle similar to that of the Wrath Kings in the Lord of the Rings saga. This war climaxed and is told through Hindu legends within the Rig Veda text known as the Battle of the Ten Kings or in Babylonian legends found in the epic of Ilgamesh in the Battle of Mark and Shemit. As the legend goes just before the flood of Noah amidst a world torn by war of Chaos, Mark the son of Malik rose up against his father with the conquered kingdoms as his allies and the battle ended upon the what was once a huge mountain range that stretched from the southern shores of India all the way up to the middle of what is now China. The Himalayan mountains were once a part of this mountain range. Upon the cliffs of this mountain Mark and Malek fought one on one until Mark became mortally wounded and with his last moments of life cast a spell that summoned his life force and offered it as a sacrifice and jammed his life force energy between the surging power of the three stones, destroying one stone as it shattered to pieces and denying anyone from being able to hold such power ever again also delivering a mortal worm to Malek in the confusion. With his dying breath Malachi called forth the liquid fire from the earth and gathered the waters of the seas knowing the combining of these elements would create a cloud of poisonous mist that would surely kill everyone on the battlefield. Just then however the spill volcano called M.T. Toba erupted underneath their feet swallowing the demiage, his son and the stones for thousands of years. No one knew where the stones lay nor even how to reach them except one. Golgothus who as it turned out was not a spiritual entity but a projection of sorcerer thousands of years into the future, who had devised the entire scenario of events that wiped out the knowledge and culture of ancient magic so that he could wield its secrets in a time when magic was forgotten and unknown making him a god among men in his era. The climatic battle and its conclusion completely wiped the world clean of all life, allowing Golgothus to remake the world and all that was in it in his image of a perfect world. Then he used this method to ensure the chain of events that led him to a place of power as he became the ruler of the world's first empire. Before he overthrew the king of Assyria in his era Ashurbanipal, he guided himself from across time into India and allowed himself to uncover the stones from their unknown stone sealed vault within the remains of M.T. Toba. The Rig Darby texts tell a story of a king who was instructed to take care of the stones buried in the sea off the shores of his kingdom. That one day two men would come knowing specific details of the stones and can explain their special abilities even though no one had seen them until the day the Dark One came to the king's palace seeking the stones. With them in his control he overthrew the capital of Asher and crowned himself king of Assyria and ruler of the first empire of the world. So was the rise of Zarkon of Akkad. He did not stop there though, upon coronation as the king of Assyria he revealed his claim to being the embodiment behind the entity of the one many cultures had come to know as Tet, the god of wisdom, an altar persona he had made in a quest to claim himself not only ruler of the world but a god among men. Which is why Tet is called the self-made god on earth. I know of these details because he and I are enemies, but more than that I am also his past life. I will one day reincarnate as him after this life is done. Our conflict with each other lies in the fact that he has been an adversary against me since I was a child. Many different events in my life were weren't manipulated by him for various reasons. He aligns against me because our conflict will one day lead to his death at my hands as well as the design behind the fall of his empire. I realize that this conflict is most likely being caused by someone trying to take control of either his kingdom or the infinite wisdom of his previous incarnation. The one he refers to as the Ascended Master who lives in a time not yet unfolded to him. I will handle that issue in its due time, but he represents a great obstacle that must be contained. He has already proven himself to be able to influence the events of my life even from his era through the objects such as the Emerald Tablets and the mystical connection that bridges his time and that to mine known as the Holt of Ameni.
are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone.